Hi everyone and welcome to the mystery reading. It is such a pleasure for me to be here with you in this virtual space. Thank you so much for your interest in my work. I received so many comments, emails, messages about the mystery readings. Um, yeah, so this is a special one. I do the mystery readings every Saturday on Patreon and once in a while on YouTube, I felt called to do it today. So whenever you find this reading, it was supposed to find you in this moment. This is a timeless message. Whatever your zodiac sign is, this is for everyone. So open your heart, you know, try to receive the energy. And I invite you to step into this reading with no preconceived idea. And yeah, enjoy. Okay. As always, I'm going to start by picking the general energy. Let's see what message wants to come through today for the collective. What is the general energy? Okay. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. So the Eight of Pentacles is connected to the sign of Virgo. It's very much about our dedication. When we choose to show up every day and dedicate our time, dedicate our energy, we are building something. We are individually transforming through showing up every day. And we are building something. The Eight of Pentacles can come up a lot when we are asking ourselves, am I doing enough? Am I working hard enough? We could also be comparing. Am I as productive as this other person? Why can I not be as productive? Or is what I'm doing every day worth it? There's so many questions that could be coming up with that card. And we're going to see what the reading says. But Eight of Pentacles to me is very much about confirming that what you dedicate your time to is valuable, even if you cannot see it in this moment. There's a bigger purpose always to this card. And sometimes we don't know what it's about. Remember that the sign of Virgo is connected to the Hermit card. There's a lot that we don't know. But if we focus on the next step, what is right in front of us, and if we dedicate our heart, energy, time into something, results are going to come. And we will transform along the way. Um, any eight in the tarot is connected to transformation. Okay, let's see. Let's see what this is all about. Let's see what this is all about. Have you been wanting, or feeling called to invest your time into something? Or again, have you been asking yourself those questions? Am I doing enough? Is this really where I'm supposed to be? Three of Cups. Right away, first card. To me, this is the invisible family. Um, the Three of Cups can speak, of course, of community, your chosen family, your quote-unquote squad. Uh, to me, as a reader, this is about the invisible, your guides, whatever you connect with. Sometimes we don't even have name for those things. You know, some people say guides, some people say angel. Some people connect with the beloved dead. Three of Cups says, what you're doing right now matters. Even if you don't know what's coming up, your guide are saying, this is it. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. If you know me a little bit, you know how special this card is for me. Again, this is a clear message from our guides saying, there's a purpose to all this, even if you don't know. And the Empress and the Page of Wands is definitely a confirmation that you are building something right now. It might be um, a little challenging to feel like you have to work every day or spend time doing something that is not necessarily your biggest passion, but it can help you get to that. 
with the page of wands there's this new energy that's about to start there's the initiation of something a spark of something it could be that you have the opportunity to fall in love with something that you will show up every day and dedicate your time to but there could also be this synchronicity that happens and through work through you showing up there is something new that start the page of wands is such a special energy because the way the page looks at the wands is just it's different than any other card in the tarot the page is looking at the one and it's like for some it could be just a piece of wood but for him it is a magical tool there's infinite possibilities it's very exciting when i look at this card i get um i get excited because i know that there is probably the spark of something that's about to happen that I'm going to be very passionate about. Um, and I think that the page and the tarot are inviting us to stay curious. If you feel called to try something, don't overthink it and try it. You never know when you can fall in love with a new passion, when you can find out that you're actually good at something. You know, the Empress is it's so many things, you know, I cannot just say one word to describe the Empress. This is a very abundant energy. This is the growth of the seed, cultivating something, another card of dedication, and also fits beautifully with what I said, falling in love with something that you will be working very hard on. So, Two threes already in the reading, and three is such a magical number. The growth of the seed, everything aligning. And to me, it says there's a bigger purpose to what you're doing, but you might not know what it is. And that's exciting. Sometimes when we don't know where we're going, when we don't know the purpose, there could be fear, there can be contractions, there could be so many weird feelings coming up, but... I think that the Page of Wands is inviting you to stay curious and to get excited. Okay, I don't know exactly where this hard work is going to lead me. But you know what? I'm open. The Empress is a card of receiving. Opening yourself to receive. Whatever the universe has in store for you, really. I think that you could be pleasantly surprised. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what this is all about. Of course, I invite you to write in the comments um, how you connect with the cards. Is there something that really spoke to you during the reading? Uh, if you want to share your story, you're welcome to. Six of Cups, Six of Pentacles, and the Strength card. So a lot of repetitive numbers. Three, three six six eight eight to me that is a clear sign i absolutely love repetitive numbers numerology angel numbers um i think they are always showing up to guide us in some way and kind of confirm that where we are is good enough we're exactly where we're supposed to be six of cups and six of pentacles notice that on both cards there is an exchange of energy on one card, you see someone, you know, offering something here. Someone is offering a cup full of flowers to another person. Maybe that's their inner child also. Who knows? I feel like this is about reconciliation, not necessarily with another person. That could be, you know, the strength card is here. We're talking about the heart space, but it could be reconnecting with an old passion Again, falling in love with something that you do. And I feel, you know, in my humble opinion, that is even more powerful than um, just focusing on finding love or reconciliation with a past person or whatever. I think that there's the opportunity here to fall in love with what you do every day with 
something that you are good at. And I think that this is just the growth of the seed, the first growth. But there's a full grown tree, you know, that is on the horizon. This is what I'm sensing here. There's definitely something connected to transformation and like not knowing why we are in a certain position. It could be at work, in a relationship, but the transformation that we experience is very important. And there could be clarity coming up very soon around that, having a specific revelation around you, who you are, why you are here, why you're doing this thing. How come you were led to end up in a certain position? So the strength card is connected to the heart space, is connected to the sign of Leo, very connected to the sun card, welcoming in our life the sun energy. And with the Empress, it makes sense. You know, the Empress is about receiving. And to me right now, uh, in every reading I do, there's this energy of the collective working on welcoming the sun. You know, everyone loves the sun card. I think that this is just like a thing in tarot. Everyone is like very happy when they see that card. But we have to learn to welcome that energy. You know, tarot is not lottery ticket. It's not like you pick a quote unquote good card and everything is going to be okay. There's work to do. You have to be mindful, you have to process the energy and really do the work, you know? I think that the strength card is inviting you to focus on the things that you love the most. What lights up your heart space when you think about it? Is it your partner? Is it the possibility of falling in love with someone new? Is it your work, your passion, um, a hobby, whatever it is? I think that in the next couple weeks after watching this reading, if it spoke to you, there's going to be this transformation around work and what you do in your heart space. Being able to show up with love in situation. Um, and it feels like it's after a long period of feeling like, you are doing the same thing over and over again. You could have been feeling stuck or maybe right now you feel stuck in a routine that is not nourishing you. There's transformation happening around that and I love it. I love seeing that. Uh, fabulous cards out on the table. It feels like there's this sun after the storm energy and I don't know if the sun card is going to show up but I keep on seeing the sun and thinking about the sun card so i don't know four of cups at uh, four of wands i'm sorry ten of wands in the wheel of fortune again repetitive numbers ten ten very interesting four of wands and the wheel of fortune personally to me are two of the most esoteric card in the tarot there's this magical energy we are finally letting go of something that has been a burden. Like it's something that has been maybe slowing you down in your growth. Something that has been feeling stressful, heavy to carry. Again, I feel um, someone who's been stuck doing the same thing and not understanding the purpose and not being able to quote unquote like see the sun, see the light at the end of the tunnel in some way. You're letting go of something that, again, has been a burden. And the circumstances of that feels very magical. Three of Cups is here. Four of Wands, Wheel of Fortune. Again, something that you might not know why it's happening. You might feel like it's too good to be true. But you are the one making the decision. You know what? I want to receive this. I want to receive this abundance. I deserve it. And I think that this is, again, definitely what the Empress is trying to teach all of us. You are worthy of receiving. Open your heart and you can be pleasantly surprised. Um, very interesting. If you connect with the message of working, you know, 
trying to find your place at work or with your hobby, what you invest your time in. With the Four of Wands, there's always this message that comes up for me, which is you are a channel. It could be that you are co-creating with spirit. I know that sometimes it can sound a little woo-woo when you hear people say that, but this is an important message. Co-creating with spirit, meaning feeling the call to do something, to use your hands, to create something, and not really knowing why. You're just answering the call, picking up uh, your pens, picking up your brushes to paint, picking up your guitar and writing a song, um, working with your hands, working with the elements, whatever it is for you. I think that there's this beautiful call to co-create with spirit, to just try something, to just do it and not overthink the why. Well, what is it going to give me if I do that? I'm not going to make money with that. Or am I wasting my time? Or I might not even be good at it. Who cares? I think that instead of overthinking and again, obsessing over the why, just listen to the call. If you wake up one morning and you feel inspired, get out of your comfort zone, do it, try something. And sometimes we can create something and we don't necessarily have to share it with the world. You know, it's beautiful to create behind closed doors and to do it just for the sake of creation. You know, Virgo energy is a lot about that. Virgos are very humble when it comes to creation, teaching, working with their hands. I absolutely love that about them. This is what I'm feeling here. And by doing that, by simply answering the call and co-creating, you are healing parts of yourself. Six of Cups is at the center of this reading. It is at the heart of this reading. So we don't know the why. We hear a call. We listen. And we are transforming in the process. And this is practice, you know. The more you're going to do it, the more you're just going to try to do something, even if you're not necessarily good at it, even if it's weird and you don't know why you're investing time in this. I think that this is where the magic is. Just trying. So we're going to take another tarot deck. I'm going to take the Hermetic tarot deck and I really want to clarify and dive deeper. Okay, Seven of Swords is here. Three of Swords is here. So what I'm sensing intuitively is that maybe you clicked on this video because you were looking for some support. Are you dealing with um, any contraction around the heart space? You know, some people could be dealing with a heartbreak or having memories of the past coming up or missing someone from the past and not knowing why your mind is going in that direction. Um, Three of Swords and Seven of Swords in the reverse says, first of all, you are brave. The Three of Swords always speaks about bravery. I think it's very important to use your energy in a way that will keep your mind busy. It's very important. And the Eight of Pentacles is here. There's something about productivity that helps you heal. And I don't know why, you know, it feels like healing a broken heart. It doesn't have to be about a relationship, of course, but, um, you know, a romantic relationship. But it could be anything. Healing your inner child. Healing parts of yourself that were very hard to look at in the past. Seven of Swords in the reverse says you are good enough. You don't need to revisit the past right now. What is in front of you is the most important. What are you going to do with your time? What are you going to do with your hands? How do you want to invest your free time or your full time? Um, and when you're ready to have a conversation, call a dear friend or maybe write. Do you have a story to share either through your words 
through communication or through art, there's something important about that. I like that. I love the Three of Swords. And the traditional tarot, it is probably one of my favorite imagery. I never feel sadness when I pick the Three of Swords. And I know that this is a very uh, traditionally quote-unquote dramatic, sad card. To me, this speaks of bravery. You know, it's connected to the sign of Libra. So when we are able to be honest with ourselves, honest with others, not isolate ourselves because of what we think or what we feel, it's brave, you know? I think that this card is very connected to the sacred heart more than the broken heart. And there's something important about that. But every time I pick this card, I hear, you are brave. You are brave. And look at that. We have three, three, three. So I'm not surprised that I felt called to read for you guys today. Um, three, three, three is forever my favorite angel number. Again, a confirmation that the next step you're about to take, it's going to change your life. And I'm very positive about that. Um, and it's okay if you don't know what this step is. You're not supposed to know. That's, you know, the biggest part of spiritual work, in my opinion. Living in the unknown, hanging out in the unknown, and accepting that we don't know what's the next step. But we're going to make the best out of it. And we're prepared. You know, that's what tarot is here for even astrology i love to use astrology to just get ready for the month ahead instead of trying to predict and obsessed over energy i think it's it's a great tool just like tarot to be mindful and aware of our strengths maybe the things that are a little bit more challenging and it kind of you know it's here to help us and support us tarot is for you, not to you. So we have the Four of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and the Devil card. So the Inner Saboteur is very, uh, <laughs> it really wants to come through in this reading. What I'm sensing is that you could be figuring out about yourself that you've been... Uh, You've been ignoring your full potential. You've been blocking yourself from getting to your full potential. It could be because, you know, of inner demons. It could be because of things that you believe are the truth, but actually they're not the truth. It's just connected to how you were brought up and circumstances of your life. But there's something about that. Really ask yourself, if you're connecting with this reading, have I been blocking my full potential? Am I scared in some way, in any way, of getting to my highest level, getting to my full potential? Because it feels like this is where you're going. It feels like this is definitely one of the possibilities here to get to the next level of something, to really achieve success and experiencing something very magical around success. But yeah, again, the inner saboteur is very present. Can you be aware of that? Uh, can you talk about it? Can you make sure that when your brain goes to that place of saying you're not good enough, no one cares about what you have to say. Why would you waste your time? You know, um, can you show yourself some grace? Can you use the four of sword energy and pause and rest? You know, four of sword is, I say this all the time, but it, it really feels like, I, I, one of my teachers said that one time and it always stayed with me. You know, when you are on a plane and they tell you that if anything happens, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before helping anyone else. And this is what the Four of Swords says. Can you make sure that you are rest, 
rested properly? Can you make sure that, you know, your vessel, your body is taken care of? That you are taking the time you need to breathe before showing up for others? I feel like there's definitely something calling you to look within. And that's not going to be easy. I think it's very challenging. Um, whoever is connecting with this, this reading... There's something very challenging about facing your, your truth, facing your inner, inner, inner demons, and maybe even dealing with addictions. Um, I know something is bad for me. I know it doesn't make me feel good, but I keep on revisiting it because I get instant gratification from it. Or again, I let my inner saboteur take over. With the Queen of Swords, which I'm so happy that she came through, you know, with the Devil card and all the Swords energy. Queen of Swords will use the sword of her intellect to cut through all of that BS. She's a survivor. The Queen of Swords is the survivor of the tarot. And I think that what you are experiencing right now could definitely be the last challenge before a major expansion. You're about to prove to yourself that you are on another level, that you are not who you used to be five, ten years ago. Your mind is in a different place. And it's not because you have a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, that your whole life is messed up, you know? I think that there's something beautiful about that. So using the sword of your mind, of your intellect to cut through the BS, whatever that means for you, maybe journal about that. Um, Queen of Swords, personally for me, she comes up a lot when I need the courage to say something, do something, when I don't know why I'm scared of trying something new, stepping into a new adventure, like I can experience fear and the Queen of Swords will always come out and say, you've been through so much worse than this. Can you remember how you got your strength in the most difficult times of your life? Which also the strength card can talk about that. When you have a bad day, when the inner saboteur comes up to the surface and says, you're not good enough, no one cares. Don't even bother trying. Um, it, when you compare yourself to others, you know, we all have that little inner saboteur that comes out sometimes to play and we're like, oh boy, Queen of Swords is like, I don't have time for this. I've been there before and I'm not going back. So I can analyze the feelings. I can have a conversation about this. But I'm not inviting the feelings to stay. This is where the door is. You know, we're talking definitely about boundaries here. Energetical boundaries, maybe boundaries with other people. So boundaries show people where the door is. And this is what's happening here with some unhealthy behavior, some... Um, Again, inner saboteur uh, type of energy. And I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that <laughs> in the right way because I'm French. But uh, in French, we say saboteur. So anyway, let me pick three cards from the Three of Cups. I want three cards, a clear message from my guides your guides i want to know two three we have the ten of cups at the bottom of the deck so this is definitely a cycle that is ending we have ten 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 a lot of transformation a lot of change and this reading is timeless but i'm recording this very much around the eclipse in scorpio which is extremely challenging and when we are transforming when we are about to step in a new era there's always this final test this final challenge and i think that this is it 
pushing through fear, pushing through the uncomfortable feelings and saying, you know what, I'm not staying in that energy. And I am, again, using the sword of my intellect and mind to cut through what is not real. Very interesting. Yeah, Ace of Pentacles, Knight of Cups, and the Seven of Swords in the reverse also. Seven of Swords is such an amazing sword card because it is yellow. Um, and I know this reading is in black and white for the mystery reading, but... This is the only sword card that is yellow. There's clarity around the mind. I know I don't need to go back and revisit a toxic relationship or whatever I felt like I was missing from the past. What is in front of me right now? What is the next step I'm taking today in the present moment? What action can I take that will support my overall health, mental, physical, spiritual. What is the next step? What action can I take that can help me get closer to a more comfortable place, a better place? And the Ace of Pentacles is a gift. I always felt like it, it was a gift. Uh, and with the Knight of Cups, it says, if you are able to move through the world with love, show others love, respect, grace, and show that love and grace to yourself also. There's definitely some type of gift, a new opportunity, a new beginning, and it will be happening after you are dealing with the difficult stuff, with the sword energy. And remember that the swords are connected to the mind and the nervous system. So... When we pick a lot of swords, especially here that we clarified and all the swords came out, there's so much that we believe that is actually not the truth. And that to me feels good. Because we all experience that. Our mind saying something. And sometimes we can believe that. You know, that's proven when you say something bad about yourself, the brain doesn't know the difference. If you said that thing or another person said that, the brain doesn't know the difference. So can you show some grace to yourself? Can you give yourself the credit? Can you acknowledge how hard you've been working? Especially if, as I'm saying that, you're saying, yeah, I'm not working that hard. I could do more. I could do better. It, it's beautiful to want more from yourself. But it's very important on the road to get there. In the midst of transforming and growing and healing, it's very important to celebrate where we are right now. The Four of Wands is a lot about that. Can you celebrate where you are even if sometimes it doesn't feel good enough? Even if your brain will try to compare to others. What you have, no one has it. That's the most beautiful gift, you know? That's probably the ultimate ace of pentacles. It's that the gift of you being unique, no one can take that away from you. Even if someone tries to copy your work, even if someone is trying to do it just like you, they cannot. And that is the biggest gift. So how are you going to put your own signature on what you do? Can you prove to yourself that you want to get to the next level of something? And again, can you also celebrate what is here in front of you? I think that's very important, especially that we have the Six of Cups at the heart of this reading. And again, I always felt like this person could be offering their inner child a cup of flour, you know, a cup full of flour, saying, I'm doing this for us, your inner little one, or the part of you from five years ago, 10 years ago, and saying, you know what, yeah, we made mistakes, and it wasn't always easy and I'm definitely going to make more mistakes in the future. But right now, I'm trying my best and that is good enough. That is 
more than enough. Trust me, in the world that we live in, if you're trying your best, if you're at least trying, trust me, you're doing amazing, my friend. Let me pick some Moonology card. Oh, okay. Let's see what we have here. A new start is coming. Yeah, this is it. This is the Ace of Pentacles. This is the gift, quote unquote gift, that comes in after so much releasing. What is on the other side of this transformation for you? Meditate and contemplate. So your spiritual practice is very important. Noticing what is in front of you right now and pausing making sure that you are well rested making sure that again you are not trapped in a mental prison in a mental prison sorry trapped in ideas that are are not real you know and we have it's time to release negativity this is it this is the eclipse energy we are releasing so much right now. And for that energy to be released, uh, it has to come up to the surface so we can work with it, notice it, acknowledge it, and just say, I am complete with this. And this is something I invite you guys all the time. Um, maybe journal if this reading spoke to you and journal about what am I complete with and what am I welcoming maybe picking cards around that and journaling around that or having a conversation about that I think that there's something important about uh, letting go forgiving yourself showing yourself some grace and knowing that again the brain is not always telling the truth and that it's never too late to start over. I am sending love, my friends. You know you can join me on Patreon. The link is down below. I teach tarot there. There's a bunch of tarot lessons. I do mystery readings every Saturday and a pick a card reading every first of the month. So yeah, you can come binge watch all the content if you wanna subscribe just for one month. It's a great way to support me, to get to know me. I'm on camera on Patreon. And yeah, I would love to meet you guys and see you there. So I'm sending love. Thank you for your likes, your subscribe, and your comments. And I cannot wait to talk to you guys again.